Bernie Plesky. I saw you on my meeting list today and I thought to myself, of all the annoying things I have to do in this work day, this one will have a whole different rhythm. You know, I don't know. Do people notice the clever barbs or do they pretend not to notice because you're so powerful? And I just want you to think you're getting away with something. Shit. No, I mean, no, most people don't even notice them because most people who talk to me are not listening. Well, welcome to my world. That happens to me all the time. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Well, I just, you know, you should beware just for the future that you're not always the smartest person in the room. Not always. Um, at this moment, however, it's possible that I am the busiest, so. What? I don't know why you're on my schedule. Well, I have an idea. Oh, good, because I don't have a clue. Okay, that's fine. I mean, you really have it in your own way. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I ask you a question? You know I can deny you nothing. Okay. When Daniel says on stage that he overheard his agent saying to a club manager, you should book him to headline. He's very funny. You know, not in a ha-ha kind of way. Was that you? Yeah, that was me. I love that joke. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's your question? Well, I have follow-ups. Well, I thought you were the busiest person on the call, so maybe you wouldn't have. Right, so if you can get to what you're... Um... Okay, well, I have a great idea. A great idea for your show, and Pandemic Be Damned, get you a real. Okay, but um, my show doesn't need to be saved, and we've been picked up. It's not re -upped, it's picked okay. up for uh, three seasons already. So we are currently writing the next two seasons to be shot on pandemic sensitive outdoor locations. We are conscientiously writing uh, for minimal cast in any given scene. We're putting everyone in masks whenever possible if they have to be close together. So we're creating a story structure that both mirrors and incorporates the experience of living in our world right now. We're trying to make it possible to get up and shooting with proper social distancing and tons of testing the minute that we can genuinely feel that it's it's safe to do so and now also additionally and plus which we are going back into the episodes do you know why we're going back arnie we are going back through them to make certain that my show about a middle class white family dealing with the generationally destructive nature of shame and secrecy has enough black indigenous and people of color in it <laughs> and what turns out not to be a genuine attempt to utilize the zeitgeist shifting power of the media, but rather a totally performative display of corporate wokeness. Have you heard of Valerian Root? I prefer clonopin. Just thought I'd steer you natural since you might need a, a dose of BB. Yeah, you just don't bring a root to an anxiety fight, you know. Okay. Uh, sorry, your idea? Okay, well, I mean, this isn't exactly how I planned on pitching it. I've got it all on the screen here. I wish you could see the screen. It's like a window inside my mind. There's just so much going on. Um, but anyway, I, I didn't plan. I, I had a whole thing set, but watch me pivot. Get to back to that work. was smooth. All right. While you're waiting, <clears throat> while you're waiting to get back to your episodes, you know, being shot as normal and well, I mean, if that's ever going to happen. Uh, Seriously. Well, I mean. I'm just suggesting that maybe you want to give your show a boost. Keep it top of mind. Okay, I'll, I'll give you points for that pivot. No, I'm not new to the business. Of course, by the business, I mean the industry. <laughs> okay, um, what's your top of mind boost? Okay, you ready? Yes. We have a Zoom call. We're having a Zoom call. A Zoom cast call. I don't know what that means. Uh, well, you get your cast, your whole famous cast, to be on a Zoom panel. Zoom panel call. It's like the Brady Bunch. Where you'll see everyone. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I get what you're saying. Kind of. And I thought I'd produce it, you know, under my shingle. You, I mean, you don't have a shingle. Under my umbrella. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. Is, so this is like a thing for Daniel to, I'm just not clear on how he, I, 
I mean, are you pitching it as something that Daniel would moderate or, or he? Oh, well, that's an interesting idea. Wait, you were just calling to pitch this as, as something for you to produce? Well, I mean, I was it under my shingle, but I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we saw that money when I got the check that uh, what uh, Daniel was making, working on your show. I just realized, oh, cha-ching, there's a lot more money to be made in television than there is on the road. I don't know if you're aware of that. I am aware, yeah. Okay, well, I suddenly understood why all these big names, you know, Messina and Miller, why they, they go to Hollywood and- you know, Okay. What? See, public appearances on Zoom would all have to be cleared through TNT, and the whole thing would have to be budgeted as a standalone project. Charge $100 a head. I have it all right here on my screen where she can see it. What? We will charge $100 a head, and people will come. They are bored. People are bored. Yeah, that's a lot of money for a bored person to pay. Uh, Lindsay, I mean, if I may call you that. What else would you call me? Linz, Linzla. No, no, I'm good with Lindsay. Thank you. Okay, well, Linzla would be the Yiddish diminutive. Yeah, don't do that. Well, Yiddish is the other language of the Jewish people. Yep. Well, not the Torah one. I mean, you know. no, that's Hebrew. Right, right. Yiddish is the other one, the Shtetl, the Brooklyn one. Okay. Um. Look, I love that you're coming up with these ideas, but my relationship with you is as Daniel's agent. No, you're, you're not Daniel's agent, you're his employer. Yes, I'm also his sister. Well, that's, then how can your relationship with me be as his agent? That doesn't make any sense at all. Fuck. What? No, I just diagrammed it in my head and um, I flipped the, no, you're right. About what? Put your the relationship with me is as Daniel's agent. Agency. And if I might add, I think without any contradiction, representative. Okay. Um, when I see that Emma has scheduled you for a time to talk to me, I am going to assume because you are Daniel's agent that you were calling to talk to me about either Daniel's contract or Daniel's just general sort of well being or needs or existential position. Okay. Okay, so I, I just, I'm genuinely not looking for some sort of freelance pitch on an online engagement marketing event. Online? No, I'm thinking prime time, TNT. But how are you going to charge $100? That doesn't... To be in the virtual gallery, online. That would be online. Oh. Yes. People wow, online. I mean, you really, you really have thought this through. I have a whole pitch on this screen. I'm looking at my pitch. It is... I wish you could see, what of you? That's what I'm saying, wish you could see it. So you have a war room set up for a prime time TNT Zoom meeting. Yes. Prime time. Yeah, so you can see why I didn't think of Daniel to host it. Okay, Arnie, you get that you're his agent, agency. Great Rep representative. Without contradiction. I think so. Wow. Okay. Well, I <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm for the show. Served cold. Love it. I know the title of my show. <laughs> so exciting for me to work with you. I mean, I think we should work together. But see, I'm trying to explain to you, Arnie, that as my brother's agent, I have to tell you that an arrangement like that where we work together would be in appropriate. Yeah, but you're, the, you're suggesting that, that Daniel could headline this thing. A moderate is what I said. I said moderate. Hey, right. Hey, you know, uh, I, this might be a really great opportunity to raise Daniel's profile. <laughs> you're honest. Yeah, except no. No what? No, all of it. No, no, no. And please don't take it personally. Well, I can't help it. I'm a person. I know. I'm sorry. I just, I'm trying to say like, I, I, I can't do the idea, but it's not about you. So sorry. Yeah. I'm a person, but I'm not like most people. Okay. So I'm just going to let you know no. right now, if anything comes out of your office, some kind of zoom call, zoom cast call that you're producing, I will sue you. Okay.
for thousands of dollars, ten, tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, God. Well, yeah, I understand. Thank you for that okay. warning. Yeah. Now you're making fun of me. I mean, a little bit, but no. um, if, I mean, if I really wanted to make fun of you, I'd offer to send you some valerian root. All right. Listen, I'm completely serious about this Zoom thing. And I even have a copy written it. Copyrighted. What? You've copyrighted. Well, not idea. exactly. I copywritten it by sending it, mailing it to myself. You mail it to yourself and you don't open it. And that's supposed to hold up in court. It's like a time capsule. Did you like Google that? I mean, I'm not sure that's a real thing. I, I was heard about it from a friend and then I thought, oh, that's what I'm going to do. It's cheap. It's easy. I can get it done immediately because I want to get this idea right too. But can I tell you a secret? I, I'm sure it can't be any less pertinent to my life than the rest of this call. Go ahead. It's actually kind of funny. Yeah, we'll see. I get the thing already, you know, to, to, so because I, I want it copywritten. And I put it in an envelope. I, I address it to myself. I mail it to myself. I get the mail one day. Oh, there's mail for me. And I opened it. I opened it. So I do the whole thing all over again. Okay, that is actually, that's kind of funny. Right? Okay. I mean, not in a ha-ha kind of way. You know, I got him that gig. What gig? When he was standing in my office and he heard me on the phone. He, you know, I say he's not funny in a ha-ha kind of way. I got him that gig. Oh. And I, honestly, I think he was the only one that could have pulled it off. I had no idea. Well, I mean, he just, uh, did you know him back when he was aggressively pompous? I am his sister. I knew him before the precocity matured into pomposity. Well, okay. Well, they wanted someone uh, to headline a gig for Mensa, a Mensa convention. <laughs> Louis de Pesta calls me from Atlantic City and he's like, get me somebody down here. You know, I, I need someone what couldn't get these eggheads laughing and ain't no uh, crowd is going to be, oh, the airline food is so small, ha ha, laugh, smash a watermelon type of thing. It's not going to work. Not that bullshit. What year is this? <laughs> oh, remember when Sam Kinison screamed, we'll stop smoking crack when you give us back our pot on Saturday Night Live, and then they cut it so that it wasn't seen on the West Coast feed? No. Well, it was that year. Okay. Uh, listen, I saw Daniel's face fall when I made the comment about funny in a not ha ha way, and I knew what he was thinking. But I got him that gig, and it was one night, not a weekend. Not a week, one night for $7,500 plus 10%. So he didn't have to pay me off the top. Damn. That's, that was a lot of money for him back then. That's, that's a lot of money now for anyone, not in Hollywood. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah, every one of those times I got him something, whether it was one night, a weekend, a week, it just it didn't even matter how small it was. I just felt like I was paying him back a little bit. Paying him back for what? You know, for being good to me, loyal. He was very loyal at a time when nobody was. So history. Well, whenever you talk to anyone about anything, I guess you have to assume there's some kind of history. Damn, is that wisdom on you? I would file it under decency. <laughs> Human decency. I mean, isn't it? Right. Yeah, we should bring that back. It would be nice. We have to do <sighs> global yeah. trade okay listen um, if you're not interested in this whole zoom thing then i've got to go i've got to hey wait can i just um arnie was this your idea or daniel's what it was good it was a clever idea but just man don't try to play me okay so was it daniel's idea are you telling me the truth y yeah yeah mm -hmm. arnie okay my idea my my idea, do not be mad at him. I was just was gonna, I was gonna surprise him. No, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm actually a little embarrassed. <laughs> I mean, I was pretty sure if you connected the dots. No, I just can't believe how close you got to getting me hooked on it. I mean, I, it actually might've worked if I just didn't inherently despise the concept of Zoom-based entertainment. You know, I get that. I have a playwright call me the other day telling me he can't even write, he can't even begin to think of anything because he can't imagine a play being done in a theater in the future. I have stand-up comics calling me telling me they're contemplating suicide because they can't get the fix they need from a virtual audience. Jesus. 
And Daniel called me the other night to say, have you ever put your head in the oven to see what it feels like? And it feels like home. <laughs> you told me that one. It's good, right? It's dark. I, I had to talk him down. I asked him to put it in my show. Okay, then you just tell Daniel I said hello. Um, oh, I think you can tell him yourself as his representative, Tation agency. <laughs> okay, true that. True that. Okay, well, I hate to rush you off, but I've got all these ideas. And no, 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 you're not rushing me. I promise you, I'm totally ready to hang up. Well, I beat you to it. Okay. Oh, wait, Arnie. Yes. Who's busy? I'm busy. What? I, I know. I'm um, just, thank you. Thank you for taking care of my brother. Okay. But don't try to play me. No. Okay. Go away. Bye.